In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Good morning. Good morning. Let the word of Christ dwell in you in all wisdom and understanding. These are St. Paul's words from his letter to the Colossians. This word of Christ that is to dwell in us richly is the word of life. It's the word of salvation. It's the word of wisdom, of discernment, of knowledge. What we find even is that it's the word of the word himself. At the very heart of our faith, we believe in a God who has revealed himself to us through his living word. Christ himself is the word of the Father. And through this word, everything has been spoken into being. You and I are all here this morning in this church for the praise of God because the Lord, His Word, His one and only Son has spoken us into being for this reason so that we might live in order to give Him this glory. The Word gives us His words. And these are the words of life for us, as we find in Psalm 119. Your word, O Lord, is truth, and every one of your righteous ordinances endures forever. So the Lord's word for us, firstly, is our life. The Lord's word is our life. And this is why we spend so much time in church. Very often I'm asked, how come... In our liturgy as Orthodox Christians, we very often spend twice as much time in church as our fellow other, other fellow American Christians. An hour and a half or two hours in church. And most of the time, a good 75% of that time, of an hour and a half and two hours, what are we doing? We're standing in attention to that word. Because we have to open ourselves to that word. We have to kind of become these spiritual jellyfish. What makes a jellyfish unique? From every other creation on the face of the earth, we all know it. The jellyfish, as it lives in the ocean, it doesn't really swim. Well, it kind of swims, but it mostly kind of just floats around. But a jellyfish is about 99.8% water, right? It's permeable to its environment. It's permeable to its environment. And this is what makes them very beautiful. And sometimes, I guess too, very deadly. But we have to be like these jellyfish in the sense that we are open uh, to God's word. How permeable are we when we come to this liturgy in order to worship our worship is partly this openness. How well do we hear? How well are we open to understanding God's word so that word can be for us our very own life? Our very own life. And this knowledge of God's word is also part of the foundation of the spiritual life. I remember learning in seminary that we are responsible as priests in order to teach our, peace, our faithful, our people, the gospel. We teach the gospel and nothing else. And we also know that at the very heart of that gospel, right? we only have one gospel. Sometimes we say that we have four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But they are all narratives, four different narratives of the single gospel. Right? What did we just announce this morning? A reading, the reading is from the gospel, not a gospel, the gospel according to St. Luke, so to speak, right? At the very heart of that gospel is the declaration of the love of God. That we are spoken into being as a word of the word, so that we might be loved and cherished by him. And Christ himself, he summarizes, right, the entire body of the Old Testament and the New Testament in these two great commandments. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and you shall love your neighbor as your very own self. And every other one of those words in the scriptures focuses upon how God proves to us what this love actually is. And he proves it, again, according to the testimony of these words, of these words. God's word is true, right? God's word is true, and this is the reason why this word is our love. Let's kind of turn this around a little bit. Let's take a look at all of our other human words. We have humans, right, who take their own words and attempt to construct what we might call a philosophy or an ideology. And what happens to all of those ideologies, do you think, over time? They disintegrate into nothingness, right? They disintegrate, they become nothing. There is no sense of permanence about them because they do not reveal this word of Christ's truth. God's word is eternal, and this is why we can trust in it. And God's word is also very unique. It's very personal, isn't it? We come into the church in order to immerse ourselves uh, into this word, into these words about the love of God. And then we learn that God has a unique word for us. We are words of the word, and then we also, as words of the word, are given another word that is unique. Right? You follow our little theme this morning, you, you, so to speak. And each of those words is really different, and we have to, we have to be able to discern what that word is so that we can also be true to ourselves. And this is the wonderful thing about the scriptures. All of those narratives, for example, in the Old Testament, focus upon whether or not these human beings, uh, in their encounter with the one true and living God, are going to be faithful to the word that was given to them. No matter how difficult or challenging that word was, how about the prophecy of Jonah? How about the prophecy of Jonah? It says at the beginning of the book of Jonah that the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the prophet. And the word said, go to Nineveh and preach against this mighty city for their sins have reached to heaven. They have reached to my ears. And what did Jonah do? He ran away. He went in the opposite direction. He heard the word, but he rebelled against the word. And we all know the rest of the story. Because before Jonah could preach judgment against the Ninevites, Jonah himself is judged by that word. That's the book of Jonah. That the prophets themselves, in the receiving of that word, received it first as their very own judgment, and then through their repentance, through their faith, through their love for God, accepted that word so that it might also, in due time, become mercy. We all have this word, and this word comes to us in many ways, in many and various ways. I was thinking yesterday, and this is just a little story, but we all have these little stories, and. Um, reminis reminiscences, reminiscences of um, things that have happened to us in our lives. And this is a kind of unique for me. And I, it happened to me about um, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, no, 20 years ago, when I was a priest in Montana. And um, I was at the car wash in Montana, getting my car washed. And um, I had in the CD player one of my favorite CDs. And this was a CD of Rachmaninoff's All Night Vigil, which is his uh, rendition of, he took this beautiful Znamini chant and he harmonized it. And um, those of you who have ever heard this All Night Vigil of Rachmaninoff, it's just the most spectacular thing. It's just spectacular. 
Um, and my wife wasn't there, so I turned it all the way up. I turned it all the way up to number 10 and rolled up the windows, and I was waiting for the car wash to finish. And then all of a sudden, there was this knock on my window, and I, I rolled down the window, and there was this young woman um, with tears flowing down her face. Right? And I turned down the music really quick because I was kind of embarrassed that I had it, you know, ramped up so much. And she said, what is that music? I've never heard anything so beautiful before. And I said, well, it's Rahman and it's all night vigil. It's one of the services in the Orthodox Church and I'm a priest and what else can you say in two minutes when you're in the car watch? And then and I said, oh, here you can have it. So I punched it out and I, I gave her the disc and she said, you know what happened? He says, I, I was sitting in the car wash and I'm weeping because my grandmother, my grandmother who raised me died this morning. And as I was sitting in this car wash, I thought I heard angels. Right? And then I realized that it was your music coming from your car. And then I realized and I heard this message from God through this music, through these angels, that everything's going to be okay, right? And I said a prayer, God bless you, be safe. Um, she told me the first name of her grandmother, and I prayed for her, and we both went on our ways after we paid for our $5 car wash. <laughs> these little things happen in our lives that are about God's revelation and God's moment um, that, that He gives to us in order to show us this love, and again, it happens through this word. Where do I go? What kind of decisions do I need to make about whatever's coming up, whatever is immediate in my life? For our students, where am I going to go to school? We should be very careful about that and very discerning. That is going to be a game changer. It will affect our children's life, where they go to school. For us as adults, where do we work? What kind of work do we do? Is this work that we're doing in accordance with God's own word? Are we following his word in our work? How are we doing our work? And you know, the, the whole thing goes on and on and on, even down to the littlest detail of our daily lives as we struggle to just do these very ordinary things in our homes. Holiness is all about being faithful to God's word, God's word in these very ordinary ways, in these very simple ways. Father Alexander Schmemann, he would say that we as Orthodox Christians, we sacramentalize everything. We take something earthly and we make it heavenly according to the power, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We take all of those drudgery things that we do during the day, and we take them, the pots and the pans and the homework lessons, and the cleaning and the working and the getting into the car, and trying to get our garage doors to work when it's seven below zero and all of the rest of this. We do it and we transform it by God's word into heaven itself into heaven itself, because these are the ordinary things that, that God wants us to do in order to be faithful to his word. So this is what we have this morning, according to the epistle from St. Paul, let the word of Christ not simply dwell in you, but dwell in you richly in all wisdom and understanding. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.